This is a new science, socio-cyberneering. And this is its inventor, the extraordinary Jacques Fresco. He's my guest this weekend on News Weekend. My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Uh, I could go through all the things that Dr. Fresco has done. He's a social engineer, industrial engineer, designer, inventor, uh, consultant, was a consultant for Rotocraft Helicopter, director of scientific research laboratories, Los Angeles, designed and copyrighted various items, ranging from drafting instruments to x-ray units, uh, has had works published in the Architectural Record, Popular Mechanics, Saturday Review, uh, and has been a technical and psychological consultant to the motion picture industry member of the Air Force Design Development Unit at Wright Field, uh, developed the electrostatic anti-icing systems, uh, designed prefabricated aluminum houses. What, what does it say in your driver's license? <laughs> what is the occupation? Industrial designer. Jacques, you... Uh, Social engineer. Does it bug you that... Uh, People, when they talk about Jacques Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time. His thinking is, we're not ready for advanced kind of thinking of no, that mean, type. There's a bug I, I imagine every creative person in every field encounters that sort of problem. No, it doesn't. I can't afford it. There's too many things that are important. What is, is socio-cyberneering? Socio-cyberneering uh, is a new organization and it represents the application of the most sophisticated forms of science and technology toward problem solving so that we can reclaim the environment which we loused up over the years and to build a way of life worthy of man to humanize society, to break away from the artificiality, the regimentation that dominates our society today. Our society seems torn apart and pulled in many directions, socio cyberneering is an approach at the restructuring of society in humanistic terms. Humanistic terms, yes. yes. Uh, the times I've spoken to you, you're very science and technological oriented. You want uh, categories and people, I remember classified in categories and certain people living here and so I never wanted that. No. Let's say that we, we didn't read each other or I did not communicate the ideas. Uh, in essence, to me, all of the marvels of science and technology, all of the electronics and mechanical wonders, are just so many millions of tons of junk, unless it enhances the lives of men. The reason we emphasize machines and technology is to free men to go to art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and to find the meaning of their own existence and lives. How much can machines do? Can they we run feel, the things that are necessary to run? Well, Mr. King, if we can launch a rocket off the Earth while it's turning, find a place on the moon, land it automatically, pick up samples of the soil, bring the ship back without humans, I think the Russians have done this, bring the ship back to the Earth, surely we can handle airliners or anything else with redundancy. The problem, though, is a political structure is how do you start changing a society this much which has really no political system? No, it sense? has no political system. It is not affiliated with any political party. It is neither communist, fascist, nor socialist, nor democratic. socio cyberneering is a sort of a quantum jump, a, a severe departure in man's way of thinking. How do you make a severe departure with millions of people? With millions of people, well, I think you pretty much understand that most of the development we have in our society today, the technology, the airplane, TV, radio, uh, modern production technology, is really done by very few people. I would say several hundred people comprise the modern technological civilization. But you don't need pe millions of technicians and millions of scientists. How many people that you know of today sit in their home and play their phonograph and radio and TV have any idea of how this works? No, it's just happening around them. I don't and, have any idea. And they're falling behind. What is happening to man is that his technological society the newer value systems that dominate our times that are pressing onward are just leaving behind hundreds of thousands of people that cannot make the transition. In other words, people that can't change can be found in the Amazon jungle today, the headhunters. Yeah. And we've got to change. I think the book Future Shock, or the book I've worked it. on looking forward, Future Shock points out that there are a lot of things going to happen, whether you like it or not, that the future cannot be stopped by anyone. It is a continuous 
progression. But there are always going to be large groups of people going to have trouble handling it. Yes, Changes. this is true. Look at the change of someone we agree. 60 years old has seen unbelievable change. In I life. believe they can change quickly if the information is made available to them. In other words, to present socio cyberneering in one shot is extremely difficult. I believe that people should not be divided, uh, the, the youngsters, the adolescents, and finally the, the mature young adults, and then the older folks are all divided people. When you get to be 65, you don't want to travel on an ocean liner with old folks. How come we put up these buildings for the old folks? We think that people ought to live wherever the hell they want to live. That cities must be designed so we have an integrated, intelligent society. Uh, Einstein, when he was 65, 70 years old, he would talk to youngsters. He kept reading. He kept up with ideas. Why must societies be divided into different groups? We think that you're as young as, you, uh, as your life permits you to be, as your exposure, as your ideas. All right, let's, uh, with uh, pictures, explore the thinking of Jacques Fresco and the society he'd like to see, socio-cyberneering. Now, we'll start with this. And you tell me... I'll try what, to point it out. Yeah, you can point right at it. All of the new cities will be a university, in essence. The center of the city, the nucleus, will house an electronic computer, which only controls the weather, water purification, the atmospheric conditions, that is, it controls air contamination systems. The computers do not, I say it again, do not control people. They maintain safety, they oversee the environment, maintain ecological balance between animal life and plant life. All the machines do is control the physical entities that comprise the environment. The center of the city is a university, a university that covers all subjects related to man. It is not a commercial university. It is not based on any, there's no courses that are used to exploit or abuse any other human being. All business courses will be phased out. All repetitious jobs will be phased out. We feel that machines ought to do the filthy or the repetitious or the boring jobs. That man has to be free to pursue the higher things, the higher possibilities of man. In other words, if this is the medical unit, this little branch, and if you work in this center, you may live in the garden cities that surround the center. You don't have to. You can if you will. Each of the garden cities contain lakes, recreation areas, and between cities, we let everything go back to, to nature. Will computers be able to control the weather? Uh, this is a hmm. relatively easy project to manage. Easy to control? Yes. You could control the weather? I can go into that with you in a little while. All right. Uh, can I finish that? Well, okay. okay. Oh, sorry, On please. the outer rim of the city, we have the agricultural belt. All of your garbage is compressed and pumped, recycled out to the agricultural belt. There are no garbage trucks. There are no dump fields. We use everything. All waste is recycled. This is an ecological program. All right, now, the, this is what the total city... The total city looks like this. There's circular conveyor belts that take you anywhere in the city in three minutes. The city population in this particular city is 15,000. We have larger cities designed, up to two million. The cities are all immersed in beautiful gardens. There are no trees in a row. It is not a mechanical environment. It is essentially a city immersed in the second Garden of Eden, where there are lakes, recreation areas, art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and surrounding the city, we have the agricultural belt where we grow foods hydroponically. Between cities, we let everything go back to nature. The deer, the coyote, the entire uh, ecological balance is maintained. We grow foods how? Hydroponically. What's that? Soilless agriculture in some instances, and in other instances, we use conventional agriculture, which we'll get down to in the drawings as mm. we go through the subject. All right. What, uh, before we get to the other pictures, what jobs uh, that we now know will not be present in this concept? Uh, like most. garbage men gone, right? Yes. All repetition. All mail people working in fact. Know. No mailmen, no waitresses, no waiters, no cooks. Uh, there'll when be no jobs. When you go out to eat, how will you get your food? Well, there are beautifully <coughs> designed uh, uh, areas for eating in which you have all kinds of food. Japanese, French food, organic food, and the standards, if you like it. And how would it get to you? The way the food gets to you. What we do is monitor the behavior of the cook. That is, we do a multi-channel tape on the best cooks that we know of. You're and as they prepare cat, their cat. food, 
As they prepare their food, we tape every move they make and how they handle the food and how they dice the carrots the way you like it. Then you dial 2736 and you get the kind of food you want, Chef Milani style or individualized. This you can even tape folks. your own cooking. I remember five years ago I used to laugh at you, and now all this is very believable. Uh -huh. All right, onward. What do we have here? Areas like India, where you have high population densities, or areas like China, we just can't afford to go on and make an individual house for every human being. We just don't have that kind of energy. Our population has already surpassed the point of no return. We have to unify our architecture, not that I like it, but we're trapped. We have to unify it and then make art centers, music centers, and gardens between the cities. In India, this would only extend six miles. And then you'd have countryside, lakes, and hiking area for most people. But if you try to spread your cities out, as we're doing, you're going to louse up the entire area. Are you betting that people will not declare war on each other? So that you, you can get at building all of this? Well, we don't have much choice. We're going to destroy each other, or we're going to make it. Now, this looks like some sort of submerged stadium with something flying away. In an away. area like uh, Panacam Park, we might build circular cities in the sea where the water is about 30, 35 feet deep. Most of the apartment houses will open out into the sea. You can observe marine life and fish swimming by. There'll be no zoos, no sequariums. Everything will be observed in natural conditions. There will be boating, scuba diving, recreation, and universities built in the sea. socio cybernearing encompasses the entire social spectrum. Uh, these drawings are all made by you? Yes. And this might represent an individual house. Most of the homes will be individually contoured. If you're an artist, you'll live in the kind of house that is most suitable to your areas of interest. If you're a technician, a musician, the house will be designed for your needs. Most of the houses will be self-generative. That is, the, the heat of the sun falls upon your roof and lowers the temperature on the inside of the house. The sunlight is scattered on the inner walls in which you have a phosphor coating and the room glows all evening with a soft glow without any electricity, without any power waste. All of the pavement in the area is black. Under the pavement are heating coils, that is, built-in PVC tubing or wiring or conveyor tubing for water. As the sun beats down on the pavement, we get all the hot water we need without burning any fuel, conserving energy all over the world at a much lower cost. Who's, who's, uh, who's going to pay for all this? Where's the money coming from? If you took all of the gold and all of the wealth of this country, all of the certificates of debt and all of the land ownership, all of the diamonds and rings, and dumped it off the coast of Japan, 